Oh, yeah. Happy Eve of the Aquarius full moon, queens. I would say I'm going to apologize for the music that's playing in the background because, you know, Matt Babine teaches kickboxing at this time until 7.15 downstairs, but it's Fergalicious. So I'm like, check it out. So I'm just, I'm just vibing right now. So excuse me. Oh, thank you, Aubrey. I appreciate you. I know because you didn't get to see me before on our mentorship call. This is what I look like, honey. Teenage dream. Mm-hmm. Bigger the hair, the closer to God, honey. All right. I am so freaking ready for this night. I am so pumped. You have no idea, but I hate to tell you, we're going to do some pretty intense work tonight. Some of you guys have already done this work with me. Some of you guys have never even heard of this kind of work. And some of you guys have never done this. So this is going to be awesome for everyone because if you've already watched my video that I did for you guys about like the aspects of the full moon, that's going to be tomorrow. This is, there's so many aspects that are explosive and angry and boisterous and audacious and outlandish. But I think the biggest thing that's coming up for so many of my clients is this healing that's never been done with your inner child. Okay. So tonight we're going to do a guided meditation all about your inner child. It's going to be hardcore. For those of you who have already done this, do it again, because every time you do inner child healing work, you always are going to come up with new stuff. Okay. And so many of the reasons why so many of you are not where you desire to be in your life is because you're dragging this broken down hoe of a corpse around you like Jacob Marley from freaking Christmas story. Remember he had like the fucking, his chin was tied on with like a little bandana and he was like, Scrooge, don't be like me, right? Heal. That's what he was saying. Don't keep dragging around the old you. You have to let the old you die to step into the new version of you. That's life guys. That's evolution. I am not the same bitch that I was 10 years ago. There's aspects of me that are definitely the same, but like I buried her a long time ago, honey. She is decomposed. She is rotting. She is gone. And so many of you guys keep digging that old corpse up. And then you're like, geez, I wonder why my life is more fucked up than a soup sandwich. Well, this is why. Okay. So let's do the work tonight. And if many of you here are baby witches, and you never have done this work for the full moon, this is a, one of the most amazing ways that I have healed myself and released things that no longer serve my highest, greatest good. And you guys are all going to do that work here tonight. Okay. At any time, if anyone has any questions, please type it in the chat because I love questions. I love when people are curious and inquisitive and you know me, I love to hear my own voice because I'm a narcissist. So I love to, I love to talk. <laughs> so feel free to ask any questions that you want here. Okay. Who by the show of, um, thumbs up emojis, if you're on your phone, or you can just say yes, has done, um, full moon rituals before. Okay. I've been doing them probably for about 15 years. Michelle Brando, you've never done a full moon ritual? Girl, what? Oh my God, come on. Girl, we got to talk. We have to talk. So the full moon, just really quickly, the full moon is like the end of a cycle. So just like with the end of the cycle, this is a time to let go of anything that's no longer working for you in your life, okay? The new moon is an amazing time to manifest. But as you guys know, we already had the Lionsgate portal opening on 8-8, which was this past Monday. So there's a lot of, there's still a lot of manifestation energies. We're on the tail end. Isabel's never done, Isabel's never done full moon stuff. Okay, so this is really exciting. I love when I get baby witch virgins. It's my favorite. I love to pop their cherries with an end of a broomstick. It's kind of my thing. It's kind of my thing. So 
when you're doing new moon rituals, that's when you manifest. It's when you put out like, this is what I desire from my life. And the full moon is when you're like, okay, I've been doing this thing for the last five months and it's not really getting me anywhere and it's not really helping me step into who I desire to be. And that's why um, doing full moon rituals and letting things go is, in my opinion, one of the most incredible things that we can do for ourselves. Okay. So Brittany saying to Zara, Zara, you are sending your messages directly to me. Katie won't be able to see them. Girl, Zara, why are you, why, why are you not sharing it with the group, y'all? Sometimes I do that too. I just type to one person. I'm like, why is no one responding? Okay. So the first thing that I want us to do is I want to call in our power posse, our collective power posse. If you haven't already read this little, this little ditty, I talk a lot about your power posse um, in the latter chapters and your power posse is a group of your, your guardian angels and your, your spirit guides and maybe like your grandmother or ancestors who, you know, came before you or loved ones who are maybe no longer here on this earth plane. Um, it could be whatever you believe in and whatever you give the energy to, but I don't care who you are and how deep you are into the esoteric. Everyone has spirit guides. Everyone has these, these, you know, higher dimensional realm beings that are literally standing on the sidelines, smoking a Marlboro light at 100. And they are just like, when is this bitch going to ask me to help her? I'm here. Okay. But we never ask our spirit guides for help. And it's like, you're wasting that energy. They are just sitting, waiting. So let's call our, let's call our power posse in first, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty. How about that? Okay. So let's everybody close our eyes and let's all take three deep breaths together so we can sync up our energies across space and time. Cause I have women here from all over the, all over the country, all over the world. Okay. So close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in through your nose, filling up your lungs, exhaling all the way out, taking another super deep breath all the way to the base of your belly in through your nose, filling up your lungs. Exhaling all the way out. Inhaling in through your nose. One last time. Filling up your lungs. Expanding. Letting it all out through your mouth. Exhale. Let's just keep our eyes closed. Let's go ahead and put our hands out in front of us. This is how we receive energy. And let me just call in our power posse for us. God. Goddess. Universal life force energy all of our guardians and our guides and our loved ones who are no longer here on this three-dimensional earth plane and all of our ancestors who came before us and paved the way for each and every woman here so that we may live life ambitiously. Fill up our vessels and surround us all with your light and your love and your ancient wisdom and help aid each and every one of us here tonight in the letting go and the releasement of all the things that no longer serve our highest, greatest good, that no longer serve the next evolution of ourselves and our souls here on this three-dimensional earth plane, and that no longer serves our ambitious agendas of being the head bitches in charge of our magical lives. And so it is, and thank you, thank you, thank you in advance. Take a nice deep breath. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Yes, 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 yes. How did that feel? It felt pretty good, right? Okay. So let's talk here. Let's be super brave, super open, super honest, because that's what ambitious are. We don't beat around the bush. We don't use coded language. There are no smoke and mirror endeavors in what we do. We say it like it is. And we know that no is a complete sentence and our word is law and our self-worth depends on it. So I want to talk today a little bit before we go into our meditation about the things that you can honestly say right now are holding you back. What are some traumas that happened to you as a child? What are some relationships that you really thought 
would work out or that you really loved this person with all your heart and it fell apart and you're still holding on to a story that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not thin enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not smart enough, whatever the, whatever the stories, the lack stories, the scarcity stories, the not enoughness stories, what are they? I want to hear them because I really truly believe in my heart of hearts that when you speak the words and you admit that you are holding on to this energy, then that's how you can heal it, right? If you're an alcoholic, and you go to AA, what's the first thing that they have you do? Hi, I'm Jim and I'm an alcoholic. And everyone goes, hi, Jim. That's the first step in the healing. And it's the same thing with spiritual and energetic healing and mind and healing your subconscious mind and your mindset and, this, and the old faulty programming that you've received. You have to first admit that you have a problem. And I'm just gonna say right now, Chelsea Shirtlift, Shirtliff, you're a motherfucking gangster because you were the first HBIC that put it out there and said, my story is that I'm not getting the love and acceptance I was seeking from a father figure, right? And a lot of people come for me when I say this, and I'm going to say it to each and every one of you. I believe in my heart of hearts that we chose our life paths. So everything that's ever happened to us, good, bad, or indifferent, we chose it because it's the things that we chose to experience on this three-dimensional earth plane in this little meat puppet that we're all kind of rolling around, okay, that we're just schlepping around on this fucking three-dimensional earth plane. We chose these experiences to evolve ourselves, our souls on this three-dimensional earth plane. So if your dad or your father figure wasn't giving you the love and acceptance that you craved and that you desired, you actually chose the father to be your birth father here because it's going to teach you a lesson. And that lesson is going to help evolve your soul. And a lot of people come for me. I get literal death threats. It's not even joking. I'm not like trying to like blow smoke up your ass. I literally get death threats. Like you're telling me that I was in this abusive relationship and I chose this. I'm like, yes, because part of being uh, an ambitious woman is taking radical motherfucking responsibility for everything in our lives. Because when we take radical responsibility for every fucking thing in our lives, we cannot be the victim. We cannot play small. And if we're being the victim and we're playing small, who's choosing it? This bitch right here is choosing it. Okay. No one's holding a gun to my head and telling me to be a mediocre motherfucker. If I'm being a mediocre motherfucker, I'm choosing that shit myself. Okay. So you can send me all of the hate mail that you want if you'd like, but I'm just going to delete it. We actually, I put it in a file when I'm feeling really cunty and I just open it and I laugh. I read it to myself and I laugh. So that's where your email will go. Cause I don't give a fuck. Okay. <laughs> so thank you, Chelsea, for sharing that and being the first brave and bitch. Okay. All right. Kayla's the next one who we love some, we love ourselves some Kayla here in ambitious land. Um, Kayla is incredible. She has a podcast about being the mindset mama. Check her out. She's amazing. And she's just like, so inspirational. Shout out to Kayla. Kayla saying never being enough with my mom and my alcoholic hu husband now in heaven. Interesting. Her mom's alcoholic husband. Yes. So that's another thing, right? Like we have these these women in our lives that are our mothers and our grandmothers and our aunts and our caregivers and these influential people in our lives, right? And what do we do? We tap dance for them. We say, am I good enough now, mommy? Do you love me now, mommy? I got the blue ribbon. I got the A's on my report cards. I'm thin. Look at me, mommy. Don't you love me? And the truth of the matter is if she can't love you for who you are, she probably doesn't love herself. Just because she's your mother doesn't mean that she's not a fucked up mess. I think that we romanticize that our mothers are supposed to be like, you know, Claire fucking Huxtable on the Cosby show. I'm dating myself right now, by the way, because probably none of you young kids know who the fuck the Cosby show is or who Claire Huxtable is, but just Google that shit and then you'll know. Like not, my mother wasn't fucking Claire Huxtable. I love my mother to death, but she was not Claire Huxtable, okay? She was a little bit more, no, why I hang as ever, okay? 
She was just in the backyard, just chopping down the fucking orange trees. And guess what? I love my mother. And I am so glad that she was like that because it made me who I am. Do you think that if I had the perfect mom that I would be sitting here right now on this live talking this victory into you? No, I would have a trust fund and I would probably be on my eighth dirty martini and I would be stirring that dirty martini with like a, a huge Xanax. Not that I haven't done that before in my life, but I haven't in a really long time. So don't judge. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so thank you, Kay, for saying that. I appreciate you. Brittany saying, just had this week on Monday, finally had the realization that I was finally powerful enough from doing this work that I could set true boundaries with my mom and grandmother. So I did. And it's been hard, but when I stuck to my guns, because I truly believe it was the last thing holding me back, it hit me that without them, I wouldn't be the strong woman I'm becoming, sharing my story and with others. And that was what I was really mourning was the mother I re really never had to begin with. Um, yes you don't have to just grieve someone who died. You can have grief around the person that you thought someone should have been in your life. Um, Kathy Impavito, one of my mentorship clients and soul sisters, this is what she coaches about. It's, everyone thinks that grief is just like, oh, my grandpa died and now I'm going to cry or you know, someone that close to me passed away. No, a lot of the grief that we have in our own lives is the grief for the people that we thought should have been a certain way for us and they couldn't but it's like you know you're asking a goldfish to climb a tree they can't do that and it's the same thing when we have these unrealistic expectations of people to show up a certain way for us and it's never going to fucking happen so the quicker we grieve that and mourn that and we move on from that that's like next level shit that's when you truly step into your most ambitious life right Chelsea's saying, I totally agree. And I chose it more than once, not anymore. And that's fucking growth. And that's what being the head bitch in charge of your magical life is all about. It's choosing a different choice, even if it's easier to stay in the shit pit. You know, I've had this conversation a lot with my clients today because today was um, one of my coaching days where I do my mentorship coaching, my one-on-one -on -one coaching, my healing sessions with my clients from all across across the globe. And there was like a main vein. There was like this main vein and all of my coaching, not all of them, but a lot of them was the, there was like this main vein where it was just like, if, if I'm telling you to do something and I've done it because I'm your coach and you always want to stand on the shoulders of giants and be in proximity to greatness and wisdom, and you're not doing the things that I'm telling you to do, then guess what, bitch? And this is how I talk to people. Don't get it twisted. This is literally how I coach people. Guess what? You fucking like it. There's something that you're getting your rocks off or your panties wet over. That is reason why you're not giving it up. Maybe it's like, you're so comfortable with the dysfunction. Cause that's all you've ever known that you're like, when things aren't dysfunctional, I actually get scared because I'm so used to the dysfunction and I'm so used to like the drama, right? How many of you can say that I can, that's why I would go from one abusive relationship and one fucked up friendship and one fucked up thing to the next, because I was like, this is easy for me. I know how to be in abuse and I know how to be in narcissism and I know how to be into codependent enabling energy. That's so easy. What's not easy is to break out of that hypnotic rhythm. It takes fucking work. So I'm here to tell you that if you listen to the words I say and you don't go and change yourself or at least start to get the ball rolling to start to make those changes, you are a dumb bitch because you actually like where you're at. It's serving you in some way, you know? And a lot of people will be like, that's not true but I double dog fucking dare you. No, I actually triple fucking dog dare you. Okay, there's no coming back from a triple dog. I actually triple dog dare you to hold the fucking mirror up to your face and say, oh, oh, bitch, you're the problem. It's no one else, it's you. And that's what it being a bitch is all about is taking that radical responsibility and, and having the hard fucking conversations with yourself and being like, I am my fucking problem. And people don't wanna hear that. People don't want to fucking hear that because it's uncomfortable and it's really a hard pill to swallow. But once you get through the discomfort and my nipples literally just got so hard, they could cut glass. That's why I'm like, I know that the, what I'm saying is true because that's like spirit gasm going through me right now. Once you get on the other side of that, that's when your fucking life opens up. That's when your whole life opens up to greatness.
Kim saying, when you choose it, you own the power. Ab-sa-fucking-lutely. And Michelle Brando saying, I am my own worst enemy. And that's how you start to heal. That's how you start to heal, right? I love this. I love this conversation. It's just so freaking good. So freaking good. Yeah. And like Chelsea saying, hurt people, hurt people. Absolutely. And how many times have I hurt people? <sighs> Too many. Too many. But guess what? I've, I've done so much healing work over the years that like, I'm okay with that. And I've made like my reparations with those people, whether it was like to their face or what, whether it was within my own soul, you know, Michelle is saying, I am way too controlling and I lose my shit when things don't go my way, especially with my husband and my, my kid, probably because my mother is the same way. Right. And isn't it funny how when we're growing up, right, we always say like, when I have a kid and when I get married, I am never going to be like her. I'm never going to be like her. And then what we do is we just start the same hypnotic rhythm. Um, that is faulty programming. Because a lot of times when we have issues in our life, we know it's wrong, but it's like, we're on like that. Remember the merry-go-round? I'm also dating myself again, because I don't think that they have those anymore. Cause like so many children, I almost died on them like 300 times, but you're on the merry-go-round. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And you want to get off because you're literally ready to blow chunks, but you can't. And it's the same thing with hypnotic rhythm. And anytime that you're living in that energy and you know, it's wrong, but you're not changing it you are what we call a drifter, right? But by you even writing those words, Michelle, that's starting the healing. That's starting to unravel the, the, the knot, you know? So you should be really fucking proud of yourself. And let me tell you something right now, girl. Um, I always said like, I would never hit my children. I would never do this. Now my stepdaughter, Karina, my husband's daughter from his first marriage, I adopted her when she was 13 years old. Okay. And like I would, my mom used to beat the fuck out of me, like slippers, like wooden spoons, like whatever she could, you know, hit me with, even though she said she never did that. But then like, she buys me a wooden spoon survivor t-shirt for Christmas one year. I was like, I'm a little confused. I'm a, I'm a little confused by this. Right. So I'll, I'll never forget. I was like, I would never hit my kids. I would never do this. One day I was in the car and Karina was sitting in the back seat and Matt was in the passenger seat and she was just fucking mouthing off, mouthing off, mouthing off. And I don't know where it came from, but like my fucking right hand just like went behind me and I just pulled her hair really fucking hard. And I, she had all those, you know, the kids, the young kids, they wear like all the earrings all around their ear. Well, I ripped out like half of her earrings. And there was less like blood squirting in my fucking back seat. And I was like, oh, you deserved that. Fuck you. You know? And then I literally like went in my room and I cried like the whole night. Cause I was like, Oh my God, where did this come from? Bitch. I knew it was wrong, but I didn't know it was wrong in the moment. Cause it was just like, it was like a knee jerk reaction just to do this. Cause that's what my mother used to do when I was a kid, right? You'd be in the back seat, mom, up the bell, mom, mom. And she would just like, however she could whack you, she was going to whack you. Or I always tell the story and she hates this cause she gets so embarrassed. But one time I was <laughs> She was hitting me and I was yelling out the window, help me, help me call 911 when we were driving home. And she literally, we had just got a car. This is in the eighties. So again, I'm dating myself, but we had just got a car that had like the automatic windows that you just press the button. You don't have to roll it. And she literally rolled my fucking neck up into the window. So I had to drive home like this with my neck caught in the window the whole time. Could you imagine if that bitch hit a bump and I would just been a fucking decapitated. I'm totally normal. And now I can laugh at it. I mean, it was fucking traumatic, traumatizing as a child, but now I can laugh at it and say like, I understand why I pulled my daughter's hair because it's in my fucking DNA. And I fight that anger shit all the goddamn time. And this is normal, but you said it. And now when you say it, I always say like, why do you think that when you write, it's called spelling? Words are spells. You're casting spells and they can be good and bad. So once you say, okay, I do this thing, I flip out, I go, go fucking zero to hundred, like Drake says on my kid and my husband, and you know, what's wrong and you know, you're repeating a pattern, then it's easier to get out of the hypnotic rhythm. Cause you're like, oh shit, I'm doing it again. And then you take out the old pattern and you fill in the blank with new patterns, right? Christina saying nothing I ever did was good enough for my mom. There was never any encouragement only. I don't know about that. Are you sure you can really do that? And where did that come from, Christina? It came from her not feeling that she could do those things. 
right? It was never, ever, ever about you not being enough. It was her own insecurities. And don't we all do that to our own children? We put our own shit and our own insecurities on them. And then guess what happens? That ancestral damage, that ancestral trauma, it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And like I always tell people, I talk a lot about this in my book. Um, and I talk a lot about this in my podcast. When you heal yourself, when you do the healing work for yourself, you not only heal seven generations that came before you, but you also heal seven generations that came after you. So for all of you moms out there that have little girls, think of it. When you do this work for yourself, you're healing her, you're healing her children and your children's children. Because think about it, not to get too epigenetic and science and nerdy and esoteric, but when your grandmother is pregnant with your mother, you are already in your mother's DNA. So whatever your grandmother went through, your mother has that epigenetically, those trauma wounds in her DNA, and you carry the same ones. And it's been proven by science. Look up epigenetics. There's also a really amazing book called It Did Not Start With You by Mark Wolin. Incredible book. So a lot of the shit that we do is not even us doing it. It's like what's been passed down through our line, right? Celine, hey girl, Celine saying, as a child, I was put in the middle of my parents' divorce. Oh my God, how many people can say that? So many of my clients acting as a messenger between the two. And I have issues with people pleasing and healthy boundaries. Yep, because that was your job to be the people pleaser, to keep the peace, to be the mediator. So then what happens? Whatever we go through as a child spills over into our adult lives. And then we wonder why we're all fucked up. And that this whole world is just a bunch of little spoiled brat kids that never got the attention that they wanted, like just got bigger and then they just start controlling the world. And then you're like, hmm, I wonder why everything's so crazy. D Duh, <laughs> right? Oh my God. <laughs> of course, Kim Fox is calling me Moira Rose because I literally am Moira Rose. It's ridiculous. Isabel is saying, that not being white or blood related meant I have to placate in order to exist in the world. No one will be left for me to have in my life. So just a little back story on Isabel, she was adopted and she's also of Spanish descent growing up in an extremely white family in an extremely white country, in an extremely white neighborhood. And so what did she have to do? She had to like make herself small. She couldn't be everything that she wanted to be. She had to tamp herself down because guess what? If she's too big, no one at the end of the day will love her. Who's going to love her? And that's another fear that a lot of people have. So what we do is we play small and then we make ourselves sick. We give ourselves illnesses. We give ourselves diseases. We give ourselves sickness because we're trying to tamp down our true authentic selves. So many people who have um, eating disorders, autoimmune disease, okay? Thyroid issues, uh, menstrual or fertility problems all have taken all their shit from their childhood. And they're like, I'm just gonna push this down and maybe I'll deal with it later. And then instead of dealing with it, you can't get pregnant or you have fibroids or you have endometriosis or you have polycystic ovarian syndrome or you have thyroid cancer because you never fucking tell people off and tell people how you really feel. You're like, I'm fine, everything's good. And then everything gets stuck here in your throat chakra. And then guess what? Never smoked a day in your life, you have lung cancer. Uh, people who have never experienced unconditional love and who work out every day and, you know, and don't have the BRCA gene and any of this shit and they get breast cancer. It's like, because you've never, ever had unconditional love in your life and it ha the energy has to go somewhere. And I'm not a doctor. I just play one on television, but I hate to say this, but it's true. And I can channel anyone's sickness, illness, and disease and tell them exactly what happened in their life that gave them this issue and then how to fix it. And people still don't want to do the work because it's fucking hard. Kim is saying, Understanding that my mom's inner child wounded my inner child. Oh, I love this so much. I just, mm, mm, my panties just go all ooh, juicy because it's true. And when you understand that her, her inner child wounded your inner child, it's radically changed her mindset towards her and personal healing journey just in the past month. It, I mean, yeah, that's huge. And like Kim saying, a lot of people thrive in chaos. How many people grew up in a very chaotic environment and like they love the chaos, even though, and you know who they are? They're the first motherfuckers that go, 
I don't like drama. I just don't like drama. I'm not a drama person. It's like, yes, you are, bitch. You are the drama. You are the villain. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to say. And I was one of those people too. I loved chaos. And if even with my husband now, if things got too good, I had to like fuck with him or fight with him or throw a wrench in the wheel because I couldn't just be peaceful. Am I the only sick fuck here that's like this or it's just me? <laughs> oh, Jennifer says, you're so, you're, you're not wrong. So addicted to the abuse. I thought I had fixed all this, but showed right back up again, down to the last detail. Because you know what happens to a lot? And this is not just for Jen. This is for like so many people here is they do the work for like a minute and they're like, oh, I feel so good. I'm healed. And then they're not fucking healed. That's why I don't like when people do healing that's like equivalent to McDonald's drive through shit. Healing takes time. Healing is painful. Healing hurts sometimes. Healing goes in waves. Like one day you feel like on top of the world. The next day you feel like a bag of smashed assholes. And I truly believe that you will not heal everything in your life in this lifetime. I just don't. And every time I, I, I act like a little co cocky bitch and I'm like, I am so healed. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. All of a sudden it's like whammy, whack-a-mole. It's like, beep, beep, beep. remember that freaking game at the fair where the little guys would come up and uh, 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 then two would come up and you'd be whacking them. Like that's, that's, that's healing, dude. That's real healing. Yeah, Aubrey. I love that quote. There is function in the dysfunction. Absolutely. <laughs> right, Brittany? Comfort zone is not that comfortable. It's, it's only your, it's an illusion, right? Kayla saying to Celine, Celine, I grew up the same way, the messenger between my emotionally immature, diverse parents. And I finally grew boundaries with both of them. It's changed my life. That's see, inspirational. And I love that you share that because it shows people that you've healed from it and other people can too, you know? Susan saying, not deserving of loving, authentic relationship and staying in a situation that I know isn't serving me. Right. And where did that come from? What happened in your childhood that you saw that role model to you, right? Kim saying, if you're not changing it, you're choosing it. Oh my God, Kim, we need to make some fucking swag. We need to make some swag, man. We need to, we need to make some fucking swag. <laughs> Michelle saying, I would like to point out, I don't hit her though, just words, angry words. Oh yes, I'm not saying you hit her. I got my ass beat, girl. And then I beat ass a couple of times. Oh my God, no, you are literally the best mom. I love, I love watching your relationship with your daughter. And I knew you before you even had her. And I know what kind of person you are. But, you know, sometimes too, um, like I always would say, because I've had abusive boyfriend relationships growing up. And I was always say to them, I would rather you just punch me in the face because sometimes the words hurt more than the actual physical abuse, right? Because that shit gets ingrained in your brain. The, the bruises and the, and the soreness goes away, but the words can, can cut even deeper, right? And I'm sure you've had shit said to you that when you were a child that you still remember to this day. I know I I could quote that shit, right? Kim saying self-awareness is the number one step to breaking hypnotic rhythm. I'm so thankful for all the things and bitches and KB for helping build my self-awareness muscle so I can truly do the work. I love you. Also, RE, epigenetics. I actually just read last week that we were in our grandmothers because our moms developed their eggs inside of her mom. Yep, that's exactly how it works. Exactly. So think of like, you know, all of these people, um, that like have all these weird things in their life. They're like, I don't know why this is a hangup for me. I, I just don't understand. Oh, speak of the devil. Here she is. My mother is coming into the waiting room. We got to let Terry Savoy in. She was texting me earlier. I can't get on the zoom. I'm like, I don't have time for this right now, lady. You need to fucking figure it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Jess Kaplan saying totally Kim. I think it was also in the book and it didn't start with you. Cause I remember that fact too. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. So think of all these things that happen to people where they're like, I have this hang up and I don't know where it came from. What if that fucking shit was your grandmother's experience that got passed down to your mother that got passed down to you and you're just dragging this shit through lifetime to lifetime and then you're in turn passing it down to your children. Not, and this is how ancestral healing and inner child healing actually works. Um, Aubrey saying, Kim, truth, when grandmother was six months pregnant with our mothers, we were there too. It's fucking so cool and crazy at the same time, right? Kayla saying, it's so true. My mom had breast cancer at 30, healthy as fuck and didn't have the genetics. Me, I was so hard to break out of the addiction to chaos. I think so many people 
<laughs> Michelle's going, no, I also seem to like chaos. I love it. You were doing the work today, sister. I like this. Jess says, cause it shows up again and again in a new mask, right? Like how many times you have, like, let's just say like a friend of yours, right? And you're like, oh my God, I love this friend. She's so cool. And all of a sudden you're like, you start to act like she's your mother in the same relationship. And she starts to treat you like your mother treated you. And then you're like, I'm not going to be friends with her anymore. She can go fuck herself. And then you stop being friends with her. And then what happens? You meet the next friend and the next friend and the next friend. And the common denominator is you, bitch. It's not the friends, it's you. So when you heal that shit, then you can evolve and change and be ambitious. Uh, Isabel saying the chaos bleeds into all relationships and it's easy to attract friendships or even work relationships that breed the drama. And then you wonder what about you attracts it. And that's radical responsibility. That is radical responsibility. Brittany saying to Jess, Jess, I can attest that I've been on a roller coaster for the last month. Some days I didn't even want to get out of bed. And I used to think I'd been putting in so much work, but it wasn't until I started Ambitious Academy that I understand what the real work required. And that was when true authentic healing started. And I would be in my car and start crying hysterically for no reason. That's spiritual awakening, baby. That is spiritual awakening. Kim saying, Saying you're healed doesn't make you healed. I wish Katie would point a magic wand at me and say, boom, bitch, you're healed. God, I wish I had one of those too. But I think the actual healing comes when you're presented with the thing that you're healing from and you have the self-awareness and the tools, shout out to a bitch's academy and pull yourself out of the shit pit faster, a hundred fucking percent. Okay. So I know a lot of you guys did not share here and that's okay. I'm not judging you, but like I said, once you share, what the biggest thing that you're holding on to, then you can start to heal it. So what I want you guys to do tonight, and you don't have to do all this right now because this takes time. And remember the full moon is tomorrow. So you're not going to do your burning rituals or any of that stuff until tomorrow. But what I want you to do is I want you to take the next 24 hours and I want you to write down all of the things. <laughs> what are the burning rituals? I'm going to tell you right now. I want you to write down all of the things that are just like the lies and the bullshit and the trauma and the things that are holding you back from your highest, greatest good. Okay. Just write down on a piece of paper, get a fucking jankety piece of paper and just write down on this paper. I am writing all of the things that no longer serve me and who I desire to be or where I'm going or who I'm evolving to. Obviously you can say whatever you want, but what you're saying is this is the shit that I know is holding me the fuck back from being the best version, the most ambitious version of myself. And I got to let this fucking shit go. Bury that bitch. Okay. Good fella style. Remember good fella style. Fucking put them in the trunk, go to your mother's house, have some pasta, get a knife, stick them a couple more times. I'm so violent and throw them in the pit that you dug in the woods. But here's the deal. Don't fucking dig that motherfucker up again. Cause you know what happens in the Goodfellas movie. I want, I got a wing. I got a leg. Remember Joe Pesci and fucking Henry Hills puking into his napkin. Let that bitch die. Okay. So think about it on this paper. I am writing all the things that no longer serve my highest, greatest good, any toxic toxicity, any obsessions, any compulsions, any um, diseases and anything, anything that's not serving you any longer, yelling at your kid, fucking being in abusive relationships, picking the wrong person, lying to yourself, lack mentality. There's never enough. I'm not enough. I, there's, you know, there's not enough to go around. Money doesn't grow on tree. I can't afford that. Whatever the fuck is holding you back. Okay. Write it down. Then tomorrow night, when the moon gets full, I want you to go out in the yard and listen, if your neighbors, if you've never done this before and you to live like close to people, they're going to be like, this fucking bitch is baddie. Who gives a fuck? My neighbors are so petrified of me. They like just run in their house because they're like, oh shit, the bitch is back on the front lawn. She's burning shit. She's hexing me. She's going to shit in my fucking mailbox. Like they're so petrified. And when I see them, I just go. <sighs> so they're just, that's fine. Okay. So then I want you to go outside and I want you to open your paper and I want you to say to the moon, Tonight, I am releasing all of the things that I have written down on this paper so that I can be my most ambitious self. And then you're going to read that shit out loud, all of the things you wrote down. And then you're going to take a fucking lighter 
or a match or a bonfire or whatever the hell you got to freaking light shit on fire, whatever pyrotechnics you have, and you're going to light that bitch up and you're going to let that paper burn until it's gone. Okay. And when that paper burns and the last ember is out, you're going to say, and so it is. And thank you in advance. Okay. So that's tomorrow night. So you have a good 24 hours to sit and do this work. And it's not going to be easy because there's going to be a lot of ugly, fugly, fucked up shit that comes up. But don't fight it. Just let it wash through you. And remember, your past does not equal your future. You know, just because you yelled at your kid yesterday doesn't mean you're going to yell at your kid today. Just because you have been putting up with a coworker sexually harassing you for the last four years, tomorrow you go in there and you make a new fucking choice. You know, Kayla says, yes, I agree, Kim. So glad I have the tools to snap out of my bullshit. I have always had a short fuse, but I've noticed I have been much more level-headed and grounded since starting a bitch's academy and doing the work. That makes me very happy. And when I do get angry for no reason, I can snap out of it and get back to homeostasis, right? Because when you get angry for no reason, Kay, and this is for everybody here that also gets angry for no reason, because I also get angry for no reason. It's just old programming that's just still kind of lingering around. It's like a fart in the, like just a fart on an elevator, you know, for a couple floors, you can still smell it. Then it goes dissipates usually. Same exact thing. Brittany says, I don't even know if there is such a thing as being fully healed, but I finally reached a point of enjoying the journey and understanding what it means to show up as my best self. Right. Because healing is a journey. And what do we all want? We want instant fucking gratification in this day and age. And it's like, listen, I wish, like Kim said, I wish I could wave a magic wand or give you a pill or whatever, but it's just, you got to do the work and the work is fucking messy. He says, I don't expect any mediocrity, mediocrity, with my career, marriage, or being a mother. So why do I do it for myself? Time to stop making excuses. Absolutely. Kim goes, it's fine. I'll be the weird witch at the campground. You always need one. You always need a weird witch at the campground. And I hope that you are it because that would be amazing. <laughs> There's actually a Facebook group called Witches with Hitches. So never think that your great big business idea is dumb. Oh my God. So Kim, my online business manager and soul sister, she literally lives like the most fabulous RV life. Like she just travels with her kids in this gorgeous RV and she homeschools them and she's just like the coolest shit. So that's why she's talking to that. There's a Facebook group about witches on hitches. This is who would have fucking thunk it. Who would have thunk it? Michelle goes, I'm pretty sure that's illegal in LA. I'll have to hide. I mean, listen, you could do it in your house. It doesn't matter, but Fucking LA, man. Like, I thought that they were so like love, peace, and hair grease. God damn it. Right. Jess saying, Michelle, you can do it in your sink. A lot of people do it in their sink, especially if you're like in an apartment complex. Like, you might get a couple of like hairy eyeballs, you know, or a small burning bowl. Yep. Oh my God. Kim, you, <laughs> Kayla goes, Oh my God, Kim, I'll be a witch with a hitch one day. Yes, you will. Yeah. And so it is. Yeah, you don't need the moon like hovering over you to do the ritual. As long as you do it, I always tell people you can do um, burning rituals three days before on the full moon or three days after the full moon. The energies are still there. Okay. So if you're like, fuck, I have to work late tomorrow, you can still do it to, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Um, Kim saying, R E healing. Katie calls it peeing in the onion. Oh, pee peeing in the onion. What? Peeling the onion. It's like anatomy 101, 102, 103. You can go deeper and deeper and deeper, but you've got to master the foundations first. Absolutely. Oh yeah, that's right. There's a drought. We have, we're having a drought here too. So I just, I, I'm telling you, we got to do some like rain dance or something or like some rain magic. Isabel says Nova Scotia, it's illegal too, unless it's designated fire pit area. The sink's a good idea. Yes. I don't want anyone going to jail and being like, Katie Boyd made me do it. I'm going to be like, I don't know that bitch. I don't know her. I don't know her. I don't know her. I don't know her. All right. Do you guys have any other questions before we start our inner child healing stuff? Bueller, Bueller. No, feel free to ask them too. Cause I can always answer them at the end of our meditation. Okay, just so you guys know, this meditation is in the book, Ambitious, um, but I also have um, podcasts about inner child healing meditation. So again, the more that you do your education about this and you want, you realize like why I'm actually doing this with you, the better it will be, okay? 
All right, so let's go ahead and close our eyes. Unless you're driving, that, that would be B-A-D. <laughs> so if you're, if you're home, let's close our eyes. And let's try this exercise. In your mind's eye, I want you to see a huge calendar plastered on the wall in front of you. So this is a great visualization exercise. So in your mind's eye, I want you to see a huge calendar plastered on the wall in front of you. And this calendar is filled with hundreds and hundreds of pages posted onto the wall. And the first page on the wall contains the month of your birthday. So when the first month that you were born. And in between all the other pages are the pages of your life with the last page on the wall being the current month that you're in. So I want you to stand there in front of this huge wall, seeing all these calendar months of your whole entire life just sprawled out in front of you. And I want you to stand there in your mind's eye and I want you to feel strong and I want you to feel powerful and I want you to feel full of light and grounded. So remember at this moment, you are grounded you are supported and all of your ancestors are surrounding you and they're cheering you on. And most of all, they're supporting the healing that is about to take place. And in this moment, in your mind's eye, you are the healthiest adult version of yourself that you have ever been. You feel worthy, you feel loved and you feel accepted unconditionally. And you are enough right now, just the way you are. Feel the way this acceptance and healthiness feels and really soak in what it means to be free of all the stories, of all the burdens and all the feelings of loss. Immerse yourself now in the sensation of being just one incredible being filled with light and you're shining your light all around Mother Earth and into the heavens, kind of like a Care Bear stare. This being that you are right at this moment is strong and she is courageous and she is brave and she can have anything and everything she has ever desired, even abundantly healthy relationships. And own this now for it is your truth. Now, with this healthy version of your adult self, I want you to choose a random calendar page and mentally travel back to a place where you can remember where the dysfunctional programming and limiting beliefs of your childhood began. Where is that moment when you began to get confused and start to lose yourself and your true identity? And as you do this, don't judge yourself or the moment that your mind goes to. Just allow your subconscious mind to do the work for you. Now, I want you to imagine a door in your mind's eye right in front of you. And this door in your mind's eye can be any shape or color that you want it to be. And I want you to walk up to that door and I want you to open it. And when you open it, you're going to see yourself on the other side of that door, not yourself now, but your child self, a perfect little being of light. What is she doing? What is she wearing? Is she playing? Is she jumping? Is she dancing? Is she laughing? Just observe her. And you can say hello and you can smile and you can introduce yourself now to this child and tell her that you are her healthy adult version. And at any time during this visualization exercise, you, I know you guys have a pad and a paper. If anything comes up that you want to remember, write it down. And then as soon as you write it down, close your eyes back up and go back to the work. 
So when you introduce yourself to her and you tell her that you are her healthy adult version, how does she respond? Bend down now and look her in the eyes and apologize to her for what has happened. Tell that little girl self that you wish you had been there for her to help her, to protect her, and most of all, love her unconditionally when that faulty programming was being installed. Tell her you will keep her safe from now on. What does she say back to you? Maybe you can lean in and give your child self a hug or a kiss. Either way, be sure to validate and listen to your younger self. Be present and send her love, healing, and restoration. This girl child is innocent and precious and sweet. Notice her innocence now and pay attention to her hopes and her dreams. And when you're ready in your journal, you can write down all the details of this encounter and the aspirations and beliefs that come to mind. Look at your child self now in your mind's eye and realize all she ever needed was love, healthy boundaries, and approval. It wasn't her job to deliver that. It was the job of the adults in her life. Her caregivers had their own issues and they couldn't provide those things for whatever reason. So this child became programmed with limiting beliefs about herself and her relationships, about what love is and how it should feel. She sometimes felt unacceptable and rejected. So take this time now and talk to her and tell her that those feelings aren't true. Give your child self permission to let that go. Then connect directly to her and say this. Precious little being of light. I love you. You matter so much to me. You can do anything in life and I will always support you. I see you. I hear you. You are special just because you are you. And I will protect you. And I will keep you safe. Is there anything else that you want to say to your child? What does she need to hear? What did you want her to hear when you were growing up? What do you need her to hear? Say it now to her and allow yourself to hear those words too. She had so much faulty programming and it's time to correct all of that. Capture her attention once more and say, while holding her hands in your hands, sweet little angel, seeking attention, being needy, or codependent is not the same thing as love. Do not take care of your parents by being their parents. You are not responsible for their emotions or happiness or anyone else's for that matter. You are only responsible for your own. Your parents and caregivers unconsciously projected their wounds onto you and you have adopted them as yours. This made you think that this is what you needed to do to be loved, to take on the burdens of those around you and lessen their pain. This is not your job. What you took on was yours, was not yours, so let it go now. And I give you permission to take care of yourself and not your parents and caregivers. Beautiful little one. Don't change who you are for anyone or anything. You are perfect just the way you are. And I love you. And from here on out, I promise to protect you, validate you, and see you. We all need these things to grow up to be healthy adults. 
Healthy adults are supposed to do this for children. And I am so sorry that no one did this for you. From now on, I will remind you of these things and I will be there for you in all ways. You are kind and gentle, sweet, innocent, brave, strong, worthy, and most importantly, you are so lovable. How could you not be? I will always from now and into forever love and protect you. With me, you will be safe and you will be enough. And if you have already not done so, you can offer your precious inner child a hug or some sort of affection. And when you feel completeness with this exercise, invite your child to come with you. In your mind's eye, see yourself open up your arms and your chest to her, exposing your heart. Imagine this child shrinking so tiny that she can easily enter your chest and climb into your heart where she will be kept forever safe for all eternity, resting and relaxing there in the warmth of your beautiful beating heart. And once she climbs inside, your inner child merges with you and becomes you. Acknowledge how it feels to be one with her. And then close your chest back up and protecting your heart and your inner child. And take a few breaths. And as you inhale, know that these breaths cleanse your inner child of all her dysfunctional limiting beliefs with the help and the direction of you and your healthy adult self. This child now gets a second chance. Your mind does not know if this is happening in the present or the past because our minds do not experience time as our physical bodies do. This important exercise repairs the wounded child inside you and blesses her with a fresh start. This visualization also corrects all of the dysfunctional programming and beliefs that you've received, allowing new and empowering beliefs to enter. And when you're done and it feels right, say aloud to yourself, I am worthy. I am special. I am enough. I am healed. I am whole. I am loved. And bravo, because you have now stepped into a new reality of being restored and renewed. And you have been brave enough to both heal yourself and all of the ancestors who came before you and all who will follow in your line. You have freed yourself as well as all of your foremothers and antecessors from having to experience the endure the pain that you have experienced and how freaking powerful does that feel? Your descendants will be liberated by the first and bitch of her kind. And that's some serious power. And do this visualization as many times as you feel necessary. And when it feels right, you can open your eyes. And if you feel like it, you can share some of the things that came up for you. I've been doing inner child healing work for years. And it's one of the most important things. Michelle goes, I'm legit sweating. It's like, it's a workout. It's a workout head to toe. And that's, that's you actually releasing old wounding that's been imprinted into your system energetically. So you should be really proud of yourself. So if you think of where you thought, like when you thought of that calendar wall and you instantly went to a time where you knew, oh my God, this is when it started. This is when it started. And I always tell the story about how my dad and my mom were in this really big fight when I was little. And I, and I can't remember like what I ate for breakfast, but I can remember this like strategically in my mind, my mom and my dad 
um, came home from the bar. He was drunk. My mom's, you know, if you know my mom, she's this big, she's a little pit bull. And she was just like, and he's like, I'm fucking out of here. I'm leaving, whatever. And they got in this huge physical altercation. And my dad was like dragging my mom. And I was like, please, please, please stop, stop. And they, I kind of got tangled up in their feet and they fell on me. And I'm not going to go too much into detail, but my grandmother came over and I remember her, she said to me, and I was like probably five years old. She said to me, cause she obviously knew what happened. She goes, Katie Elizabeth, I want you to look at me in the eyes and I want you to listen to what I'm going to say to you. And I said, okay. And she said, we never tell people what happens in this house. Do you understand the words that I'm saying? So what did that tell me as a child? The, your feelings don't matter suck it up. Um, don't tell people how you really feel because if you do, we're not going to love you anymore. Even if that wasn't true, because my grandmother and I were like this thick as thieves, but that started my whole faulty programming is I have a high pain threshold. How many of you say that I have a high pain threshold. Okay. No one's supposed to have a high pain threshold. It's not normal. Okay. Or like we make up this like fantasy world that everything's fine and everything's great and everything's wonderful, but we're really dying on the inside because as a child, you were told like your feelings don't matter, right? I mean, there's so many other things that came up for me in my inner child healing meditation, but like that's when things started and then it just came, oh, came from there, right? Michelle goes, my air is on 65 and I'm sweating from my eyes. <laughs> I love it. Kayla says, you don't need anyone else to validate you. And Chelsea says, the second time doing this always makes me cry. Oh my God. If you weren't crying, I don't even know. And if you couldn't really get into it right now, because you're like, I'm on a zoom, we're going to um, share this on the app tomorrow. So you guys can go back and actually watch it again and again and again at your own leisure. Um, Kayla says, my inner child was just staring at me, not playing, didn't realize how damaged she was. That happens. Michelle saying her faulty programming started when she was nine years old. Yep. And I'm sure that there was a whole scenario that went with it, right? Jess says, anytime I got triggered by my parents, I run to lay down and listen to the meditation on your podcast and it helps tremendously. Thank you. That makes me so happy. Kim says, in interesting how many times I've done this meditation. I actually felt it this time. I always met my oldest daughter, never myself until today. Mm, that's awesome. I wonder if it's because my inner child forgave my mom's inner child this month. Probably. Brittany says, I believe I was six. And that seems to always be the age that comes up for me when I do inner child healing. Yep. Kayla says I was 10 or 11. My inner child was looking down, defeated, feeling sad and unseen. Oh, Angela says, my dad said, don't tell family secrets when we went to any relative's house, scared to say anything to anyone. Right. And I was raised like probably similar to you where like my, well, my family on that side was like super Irish Catholic, French Canadian, like, you know, you don't tell anything that goes on in the house, you know, and that's, you just learn that. And then it just creates all this faulty programming because then you get into relationships where the person's not treating you right. And you're like, well, I can't say anything. Cause if I say something, they're not going to love me anymore. And all we want at the end of the day is just to be loved. Right. Aubrey says, when I opened the door, she pounced on me and was with a huge hug. That makes me so happy. And she told me she was waiting for me and I and knew I was coming and she smiled so big and jumped up and down with joy. And she said, don't stop doing the work. Thank you for loving and choosing me. That makes me want to cry. Oh, Jess is saying me too, Kayla, but I was about six years old. Michelle says, my father wanted custody when dad wanted to, when the dad wanted to adopt me. So interesting, right? Like all these things come up and you never even knew that that was like one of the things that kind of like tweaked you when you were younger. I love that you did this work tonight. Brittany's saying to Angela, my dad still says that. Oh my God, LOL. Old habits die hard, sister. It says, I told her people, I told her people, the people who blocked you out and didn't make you feel seen did so because they were at a lower vibration and couldn't handle your light 100%. And that's the damn truth. That is the damn freaking truth. Okay. So you guys have your marching orders. You're going to write out your shit. You're going to take the next 24 hours to figure out your shit. You're going to burn that shit. And then if you have to do more inner child healing, do it because 
Um, I do a program called ambitious A28P, which is just short for ambitious 28. And when I have people do that program, I have them do inner child healing every day for 28 days. And people are like, are you fucking kidding me? And guess what? At the end of that 28 days, the people who are there because they want to lose weight, they've released 30 pounds of fat in 28 days, not because of anything that they were doing physically. Yeah, they were working out, they were eating right and they were fasting and they were doing all these things. But at the end of the day, the weight was released because the blocks in your physical, emotional, energetic bodies were removed. So many people can't lose weight because they're holding on to the bullshit. So many people can't stop their addiction because they're holding on to the bullshit. When you do this work, you release the bullshit and then you can evolve in whatever way that you desire to evolve, whether it's weight loss, getting healthy, getting rid of addictions, leaving a, a shitty relationship or whatever, right? Kim is saying to Kayla, you're reminding me of the quote, quote, be who you needed when you were younger. And no, it's funny, Kim. It's like, I always say this. I always want to do that for my young clients because not, no, no offense to anyone, but there was no Katie Boyd when I was a kid. There wasn't, there was nobody doing this kind of work. Everyone was like, don't tell family secrets. That's, that's the shit we heard, you know? So you guys have your work cut out for you. I am so happy that you all took time out of your busy lives to come here and do this work. Um, thank you, Jen. I'm glad. I hope it was powerful for everyone here, even if you've done this work before. Um, Sophia is saying, this was really great, Katie. Sorry for not sharing it all. It's okay, girl. This definitely brought up some, <laughs> this definitely brought up some, Oh, brought up a lot. I feel like I'm being the person I needed when I was younger, but sharing is tough, super helpful. You know what? You, you, just saying it out loud to yourself is, is, is enough, right? Michelle, I'm so glad you came. It was so awesome to see you and Angela, my old wicked fit crew. I miss you. Don't be strangers. Um, so listen, the app is so incredible. The app is totally free, guys. Like come over and be part of this incredible bitchhood with women from all across the globe that are doing this kind of work because, you know, I know a lot of you are on Facebook and Instagram and things like that. And I'm so grateful for those platforms because I can get my word out in a different way. But at the end of the day, like I created this app to have like these types of conversations because these are the types of conversations that everybody should be having. And if more people are having these conversations and feeling supported and seeing that other women are doing this work and they're not alone, like that is what's actually going to change the world and take it to the next level. In the meantime, if you go on the app, there's a little box at the bottom. You can direct message me and ask me questions at any time. So if anything came up for you or you didn't feel like sharing because it was a little too personal, DM me. Michelle saying, what was your quote about the assholes? Oh, a bag of smashed assholes. I mean, just think of a big bag of bunch of assholes just smashed to smithereens. Like that's fucked up. <laughs> just, just saying, right? Um, and in the meantime, just throwing it out there, we have two more tickets left for Bitchapalooza, which is happening January 6th, 7th, and 8th. It's a bitch hood event that's happening at Katie Boyd's Misfit Club in Hudson, New Hampshire. So if you are interested in purchasing the last two tickets or at least one of the tickets, let me know. Um, Kim also just set up um, a link here to go on to um, Bitchapalooza. I know I'm so excited for Bitchapalooza. You guys don't forget um, Victoria Duke is coming and doing full hair and makeup makeovers. Victoria Duke is Jennifer Lopez's makeup artist and Shakira's makeup artist. So she's going to be coming and doing free makeovers on everybody that Friday. So that's a little thing that we're adding to that weekend. Um, I'm just nailing down right now the party buses for all the dinners and all the different things. So it's just going to be, it's going to be so much freaking fun. So much freaking fun. So there's two more tickets left for Bitchapalooza that's happening January 6th, 7th, and 8th. We're also getting some housing together. So if people don't want to stay in a hotel alone, we're going to be getting some amazing Airbnbs and Burbos out here. So everyone can kind of stay together, which is going to be awesome too. That's some real serious sisterhood. And Ambitious Academy, the spring semester, is going to be launching um, in January. So if you are just, so what we did tonight is what we do in Ambitious Academy and way more. You guys aren't, you don't even know what we do in Ambitious Academy, but th these are the calls that we do in Ambitious Academy. So if you're like, dude, this was amazing, get on the waiting list to be one of the, one of the small 
few that we're going to be allowing in to Ambitious Academy. Kim is putting the um, dot com up there right now to get on the wait list because, like I said, you can't get into Ambitious Academy whenever you want. We only launch twice a year. We launch once in January and once in July, and that's all we let in. Okay. Um, so Kim is saying, go to that website and then just scroll to the bottom and just fill out your information and we'll put you on the wait list for the big ambitious Academy, um, launch. We start, I think the second or third week in January, um, and we're going to have a pre-sale. So we're going to have an open and closed cart. Anyone that's on the waiting list is going to get first dibs. And then when it's, once it's sold out, we shut it down. Okay. So bitch Palooza and bitches Academy get on the wait list. And like I said, if you have any questions, or if you're desiring a little bit more one-on-one -on -one healing work, just DM me and we can make that happen. Um, I still do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I don't do it that much, um, but I still do it. So if that's something that you're, you're trying to work on, reach out to me. Let's have a conversation about it. Okay. Uh, this was so fun. All right. I'm going to go um, finger fuck myself and probably uh, shove my face full of food since I haven't eaten once today because I've been doing fat. I've been fasting today. And uh, yeah, so I'll probably be finger fucking myself and eating at the same time. I can um, send you guys some pictures if you want. If not, if it's a little too much information, you know, we can scratch that. But I love you guys. Have an amazing night. Enjoy your full, full moon rituals. And don't forget to stay ambitious. Love you guys. Mwah. Bye.